2011 was a good year to be a silver supplier. The silver price was around $35. Cash costs averaged $5, making for a comfy 700% margin. But there's a mystery here. Of the almost 1 billion ounces of silver produced in 2011, only 860 million were required for industrial uses. Supply was 15% greater than demand, and the price of silver went up. Where did the extra 130 million ounces go? Was silver violating the laws of economics, or is there a better explanation? The extra silver was bought by investors. Investors invest when they think they can make money. And in 2011, they were right. The average price of silver rose 74%. Silver is traded on COMEX, the world's largest silver exchange. Unlike, say, televisions, there's only a limited number of places you can buy silver. You can shop around for a lower price on your TV, but it's hard to shop around for silver. Practically speaking, when you're talking about the price of silver, you're talking about COMEX. On COMEX, the spot price of silver is the average price of all silver trades in the last two minutes of trading in the highest volume future month. Wait, what's a future? On COMEX, silver is traded as future contracts, an agreement to buy X amount of silver at Y price at a specific point in the future. If you're a jeweler or a large electronics corporation or anyone who uses silver for industrial purposes, this makes sense. You want to know how much the silver you use is going to cost you. But it also provides an investment opportunity, hedging. Hedging is buying low or selling high in expectation that prices will rise or drop in the future. And if your expectations are on the money, you'll make some. Some investors buy and sell silver without ever intending to use it or even take possession of it. They only own it so they can sell it later at a higher price. Let's review our numbers. Last year, a billion ounces of silver was produced and some 85% of that was required for industrial uses. But the total amount of silver traded on COMEX was 182 billion ounces. That means that for every ounce of silver produced in 2011, it changed hands 182 times before it left the market with the person who is ultimately going to use it. That means 99.5% of trades on COMEX were made by investors. Sometimes investors make decisions based on supply and demand. If supply costs are rising, they might expect to make money if they sell in the future when prices are higher. But they also make decisions for political and economic reasons. Right now, a lack of trust in global currencies such as the euro and the US dollar mean a lot of investors are buying silver for its historical role as a currency, which they hope is more stable. In 2011, they bought all 130 million ounces of extra silver that was produced. And if there had been any more, they would have bought that too. That solves our mystery. Even though supply was greater than industrial demand, investment was also a source of demand. Together, both types pushed the price of silver up. So what have we learned? There's more to supply and demand than just how much people make and how much they use. What they think matters too.